What's up, world? Ignatius Crypto Detective Palacki here at your service. This is Coin Daily. Daily Coin. Coin of the Day for today. And I apologize, I missed uh, yesterday's Coin of the Day because I got a little bit preoccupied with uh, other web design stuff. But uh, nevertheless, what's that saying? Never fear. P2Ptender.com is here. Today's coin of the day, ladies and gentlemen, is a coin I've been seeing pop up on the radar for quite some time. And I've kind of breezed through it. And there's this, you know, moments to be passive when you're doing research. And sometimes it pays off, sometimes it doesn't. Um, in this case, all it's done was my delay and research of this particular coin. So today I'll, I will be talking about this particular peculiar coin, which is the coin of the day. That coin is, can I get a drum roll, please? Let's scroll down. A 700 million cryptocurrency called Ontology is about to go live. This is an article by Coindesk.com. Big ups to Coindesk.com. Thank you for this article. I'll just be kind of reading over the article and then I'll be given my own little input on what I think is going on with this particular crypto. I've been seeing this crypto come up and it's, I don't know. It's like, I always get those weird uh, like moments where I'm hesitant on a crypto and then what happens is I slowly kind of get into the groove of it and I research it and I like it and then it usually does pretty well. Um, so I have a feeling maybe ontology is one of those. I just don't know why I've been like so passive, so kind of resistant on doing research. Every time I see it on the coin market cap, it kind of like reminds me of Denticoin. I don't know why. It's like the name or something, even though the name's different, but it's it almost jumps out at me and strikes me as having a resemblance to like Denticoin, which can definitely succeed, but it just sounds cheesy. And it's like, oh man, what are you guys going to come out with next? You know, but um, nevertheless, that's my view. That's just my opinion. If all goes well, 700 million worth of cryptocurrency, 700 million dollars worth of cryptocurrency is about to find a new home. That's because Shanghai based ontology of Prague, Project working closely with those behind the smart economy blockchain. NEO is expected to launch its live blockchain on June 30th, a step that will find one of the top 20 crypto assets finally releasing its own proprietary technology. Described as an enterprise-focused uh, platform, Ontology is seeking to provide a high volume of fast and cheap transactions, all while helping businesses grapple with the thorny problem of interoperability and identity and as such ontology is one of the several public blockchains catering to enterprise that have recently or will go live tron and vchain being other notable contenders actually iodex by the way <clears throat> just launched their own uh mayonet their own uh blockchain so iotex for those folks that are not familiar with what iotex is uh it is an erc20 token it is supposed to basically connect the blockchain with the internet of things. I was wrong to assume that IOTX was like IOTA, which is not a blockchain, but it is, uh, it runs on a platform or it runs on a platform and code called uh, Tangle, um, which is much different than the blockchain. It doesn't need an entire network to confirm transactions um it kind of uses the nodes around it and as long as there's enough nodes that confirm the transaction it doesn't need the network uh, it doesn't need x amount of con uh, confirmations through a blockchain network uh, it just kind of works with the nodes around it so um iota is great love it uh, IOTEX just launched and they're going to go from ERC20 to their own kind of platform. So we're seeing a lot of this. <clears throat> and now I'm getting excited because, you know, like as soon as I start kind of engaging more, you know, get a little pep in my step. Um, we're seeing a lot of uh, ERC20 tokens, uh, kind of like EOS. EOS was on a one year uh, ICO. I mean, it was it raised, I believe it was in the billions. It was like $4 billion or something. 
could be wrong on that, but uh, EOS is an interesting uh, project because it was running an ICO on the Ethereum um, platform um, for a year, and then they just recently transitioned into the onto their own blockchain where it's separate from uh, Ethereum, and they're saying it's going to be well, it is uh, Ethereum's competitor. So it's cool to see that a lot of these uh, coins are doing this. They're kind of like stepping away from, you know, other people's code uh, and doing their own thing. So however it might distinguish uh, Ontology's claims is the experience of the team. The protocol emerged from NEO and Ethereum Challenger founder by Da Hongfei, who is also CEO of OnChain, which developed a private enterprise blockchain platform called DNA. Meanwhile, Ontology's founder, Lee John told Coindesk that his company and NEO are strategic technology partners according to a spokesperson. Ontology's corporate and technological genealogy might be difficult to keep track of, but the result is a pragmatic approach that appears to combine ambition with a lack of the ideological fussiness. As Lee said at a meetup in March, uh, when you want blockchain to become a mainstream industry like the internet today, you have to link to the real business scenario. Very true. Uh, blockchain and cryptocurrency and P2P currency and P2P assets and contracts and all the stuff that we see um, the blockchain in the world of the blockchain kind of preach. All these things are only as good as their audience. Uh, um, and what I mean by that is people that are adopting the technology, not necessarily an audience because an audience can be uh, spectators and then it could be participants and i think we need a good strong audience uh not just day traders not just speculators not just people that take crypto and go on <clears throat> cryptocurrency exchanges and just kind of basically play with money i mean that's all you're doing is you're playing with numbers i think it's important that we have people that understand the technology besides the folks that are uh, doing all the development and programming side of things and uh, we we need a medium, be, you know. We need somebody that'll kind of cross that bridge um, and be able to take what the developers know and understand about cryptocurrency and the blockchain and Tangle and that whole field of crypto assets, and be able to simplify it in uh, terms of their speech and be able to kind of present it to uh, businesses that don't understand what it is. Businesses that aren't cryptocurrency based, they don't know anything about cryptocurrency. We're talking about businesses that probably have nothing to do with computers um, or programming or any of that. We're talking about, you know, telecommunications. We're talking about um, manufacturing, just industry of, of all kinds. And if we can get blockchain um, to these folks, and really just simplify it when you explain it and really just take it, simplify it. As uh, Albert Einstein said, uh, you know, if uh, if you don't know a subject or a topic, and I'm just paraphrasing here, but if you don't know a subject or a topic well enough um, that you can simply explain it uh, to just common folk that have no knowledge of what it is, if you can't take that teacher role and be a teacher and simply explain it to students, then you don't know that that well, whatever it is, whatever you're trying to describe. So with that being said, we need to take the blockchain and be able to go and, you know, simply explain it and put it to people who don't know what it is, but to where they understand it. And we've got to make other people understand its value and importance, um, not just from a sales perspective, not just uh, kind of jumping on the bandwagon or, uh, you know, following trend and just hollering, cryptocurrency, you know, is the biggest thing uh, out since uh, internet, la, 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 la. Uh, we, we had, you got to go beyond that and be able to uh, make people understand its application and its usefulness. Yeah, simply put. So I'm digressing here, but ontology, and this is really what I like to use these blogs for, is like, Get people tuned in. You think that I'm going to talk about this cryptocurrency and then I just rant. Yeah. So having adopted the stance, on-chain began work on a public platform that would meet some of businesses' most 
pressing needs, anchoring digital identities in the real world, allowing for felt flexibility in terms of technical design and preventing the creation of restrictive uh, silos. So two tokens, countless tra uh, chains. Ontology has created a complex framework in its bid to satisfy all of these goals. Similar to NEO with NEO and GAS, uh, the network will support two tokens. So far, uh, ONT exists, a token on the NEO blockchain. Uh, it was uh, distributed to NEO holders in an airdrop, half of which has been completed. Barring uh, un... Is that barring or bearing? Bearing unforeseen obstacles. These tokens will uh, migrate to a proprietary blockchain on June 30th. Once there, they will serve as governance mechanisms with users staking ONT in order to make network decisions. So this kind of rings a bell here. But does it kind of remind us of DAO and Ethereum? Do we remember that? Holding DAO tokens? making network decisions, anybody? All right. Holders of ONT tokens will also begin to receive newly created ONG tokens, which will serve a similar role to NEO's gas tokens funding the execution of smart contracts. Each ONT will release ONG tokens for 18 years. So we could see the ambition, we could see the, the kind of hindsight or the, uh, the envisioning and the visionary aspect of um, ontology's aspirations or ontology's developers aspirations to uh establish this um blockchain as something that's uh long term and this is good to have and you always have to have uh companies or projects that have roadmaps and they're constantly keeping you updated you know the best way to look at it is and this is in respect to the success of a cryptocurrency um it should be seen as any other business, uh, when you have a business, you know, and you're, you're constantly making improvements uh, or you're working to make improvements, you have group meetings and you kind of give, get information and give feedback to, uh, the, you know, members, um, stakeholders, especially, right? People that are donating and contributing money and finances to a business want to see that that business that they're invested in is kind of yielding a reward or it's making progress at the very least. So that's why you have board member meetings and you have um, those kinds of groups and gatherings and et cetera. I think uh, cryptocurrency should be seen in the same fashion, but in respect to um, just the public and you know it's following because we know cryptocurrency is very grassroots. So it's like the more grassroots uh, and the more unheard of a crypto is, but then you learn they have they have a big following. It's like the more likely it is to succeed. Um, look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin was something that was adopted by the public. It wasn't anything that was heavily promoted by uh, any corporation. Uh, although there, you did have people that kind of got on board early. Um, when you look at uh, companies, I can't remember the guy's name, but the uh, CEO or the owner of. Um, Oh, come on. What is that company name? Ah, don't remember that company name, but we know who we're talking about. Overstock. Um, so when we look at companies like that, they got in when it was grassroots. It wasn't anybody really pushing an agenda. It was more, uh, uh, you know, the person behind the company had a belief that they shared about Bitcoin and they stuck with it. You know, they that was one of the first people or first companies. Overstock was one of the first big mainstream companies that adopted Bitcoin uh, in terms of accepting Bitcoin as a form of payment. So <clears throat> as um, cryptocurrency is very grassroots, um, I think uh, cryptocurrency projects need to treat it, whatever the project may be, as a business that is accountable and responsible to its stakeholders and its stakeholders are not just folks that are uh, trading cryptocurrency on a daily basis. The stakeholders are not just folks that are invested long term into whatever cryptocurrency, but also potential clients and everybody's a potential client. So you always want to build that relationship with um, the folks out there and with the public. And uh, with cryptocurrency, that's what I see as fundamental. I mean, it's critical. It's cornerstone to the development 
of cryptocurrencies and to its adoption into the real world is um, we have to have constant feedback. So when you have roadmaps, as I was mentioning earlier, uh, I started off saying that if, like roadmaps are very important. So you have to give feedback and you have to get feedback. You, you got to get as much information from um, <clears throat> potential stakeholders and potential clients and people that are already on board. And you have to get, you know, what what's the, what's the issue? What can we do to improve uh, this cryptocurrency or this blockchain or this project? Um, and you get as much feedback as you can. You know, it's, it's community consensus, uh, like Ethereum and uh, Bitcoin. We have so many different versions of Bitcoin. Now we have Bitcoin Cash, we've got Bitcoin Dark, we've got Bitcoin Diamond, we've got Bitcoin Gold, and all have their own following. Like, you, you better believe it, there's folks that are on the extreme end of the Bitcoin spectrum uh, in respect to whatever particular Bitcoin fork we're talking about. Um, <clears throat> and they'll swear by that coin. I mean, they will swear by it. They are true followers, like a follower of, uh, you know, Jesus or Muhammad or Buddha. Or I mean, the, you've got folks that are religious about cryptocurrency, which is great. And I admire uh, that about the cryptocurrency community. And it is driven by community consensus. So thus, um, it's very important to get feedback from folks uh, in the cryptocurrency community and constantly give people updates. That way, you know, you're not just uh, some coin or some cryptocurrency or crypto asset uh, that's just kind of, you know, somewhere on the top 200 cryptocurrency list and nobody really hears from you or uh, knows about you. Um, so you have to have uh, constant feedback, roadmaps, um, you know, constant upgrades, uh, social media, and not just promoting, but interacting and engaging and, you know, building rapport and just ha overall having a presence. And I think that's what it's about. It's about having a presence. And as long as you're constantly um, working towards your aspirations and making that cryptocurrency or crypto asset great then it'll become great eventually. You know, it's just a matter of consistency. I always say that. Uh, and this all started with ontology. So thank you for this thought-provoking crypto coin, crypto asset. And, and thank you, Coindesk, for this article. Um, ontology has received this elaborate architecture in order to enable what is white paper, its white paper calls a decentralized trust ecosystem. Again, cryptocurrency is all about trust. It's all about verification. It's all about um, not needing a third party, uh, although third parties may be involved in, uh, in the trust verification process, depending on the technology, depending on the white paper and what it says. Um, ontology can serve as a bridge connecting the physical world and business. Um, and we see a lot of coins kind of follow suit there or go in the same direction. Uh, economy token, that was one uh, that I can think of right off the top, which is an ERC-20 token built on the Ethereum blockchain. Um, so there you have it. Not going to go over the entire uh, article here, but Ontology's team is working on a number of implementations to be launched over the coming months and years, including an ID framework and marketplace, a reputation system, a trust search engine, and a data exchange protocol. As with any self-respecting blockchain protocol, though it aims to attract app developers to build out its ecosystem. So this is kind of a gen, I would say this is a gen this is like 3.0 cryptocurrency, um, although you can compare it to Ethereum, which is 2.0. Uh, Cardano, for example, claims to be a 3.0 because there's so many layers um, to Cardano or ADA token or coin uh, uh, that it it's kind of transcended Ethereum, which was 2.0, which was kind of like, you know, the blockchain and then you've got a smart contract system. Um, we'll see. I mean, being ontology is kind of in the, it's a different time. This isn't like when Ethereum was being developed, even though that was just years ago, just a few, right? But, um, 
I, I guess you can say ontology is a 3.0, not a, not a 2.0 uh, crypto, but you can compare it to a 2.0, right? So for users who do swap manually, Ontology has posted a frequently asked questions page and plans to release a token swap guidance next week. So uh, the Ontology mainnet will accept only round numbers of tokens and disregard fractions. And we've seen that with Ant shares, which later became NEO. Uh, there was no fractions. You, you couldn't... Uh, You, didn't, you just didn't have fractions. There, there was no 1.735645, you know, coin, whatever, like you have with uh, most cryptocurrencies. Um, users will have until October to complete the swap. So there you have it, Ontology. These ICOs raise a ridiculous amount of uh, proceeds. That's great. I mean, to see that it can be in the billions of dollars, um, it really goes to show you that cryptocurrency has created uh, an incredible um, counterpart to the financial system or to the you know, to the world of assets. Because now you have all these digital assets that you can put your money in, and they exist. They're there. It's volatile. Yes, uh, crypto is still it's an inception. Or st it's an infancy stage. It's it's still something that we haven't quite figured out, but we're figuring it, it out in the process. <clears throat> so it's going to take some time to get there, but uh, I think we will. And I think in, in the meantime, um, crypto can be seen as something that complements the financial sector and that, you know, we can leverage all that debt that we have, world debt, um, there's a there's a demand for money. There's a demand uh, for assets. There's a demand for this because uh, worldwide, you know, gl global debt is it's global debt. It's there. It exists, and we need something that'll you know that'll kind of counter that, work as a counterbalance. And I think crypto is it. And I always say that it's like it's like the main selling point here. Uh, nevertheless. That is what it is, and that is the coin of the day, ontology. So big ups to ontology. Thank you for coming out with this great idea. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read the white paper now uh, that I've read an article on it. And we'll be giving away Digibyte. That was actually a, in the video I released a day before uh, yesterday. Uh, so all the folks out there that want to get some Digibyte, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment. And like my videos, leave your Digibyte address and I will send you some Digibytes. The uh, more engaging, the more interactive you are uh, and in a professional, likable <clears throat> manner, um, the more likely you're going to be to get some Digibytes. And I think that's it for today. I don't think I'm going to make too many videos today because I still have to upload the ones from the day before yesterday. But I'll be trying to stay on track with the daily uh, coins coin of the day presentations and vlogs and uh, p2ptender.com follow me on twitter this is yours truly ignatius crypto detective palaki i might change that name i don't know it's investigative journalist crypto analyst and enthusiast by the way so tune in to p2ptender.com, subscribe to the YouTube channel, find me on Twitter, and uh, I'll be uploading some more videos soon. You, the viewers, make this possible, so thank you for tuning in, and uh, please leave some comments, suggestions, some feedback, uh, a thumbs up, a thumbs down, whatever the case may be, and uh, thanks again, and until next time.